Hi! Welcome to 2017 Nebraska Passport Training. I'm Erin Worth, your Passport Program Manager. I'm so happy you all are here today. Um, if you could quick let me know that you are here by emailing one of my coworkers who's helping out today, Alex, and his email is right up on the screen. And then also you can ask questions throughout the webinar and you can again just email Alex your questions and we will make sure they get answered. So, like I said, welcome to Passport Training. The Nebraska Passport Program is all about helping people create lifelong memories while they explore our beautiful state. You were all chosen to be part of this program because I know you're going to offer our participants a wonderful experience and you are going to be part of their passport stories and their memories that they will cherish forever. The people involved in the passport program are what makes this program so special. So thanks again for joining me on this adventure. I know we're gonna have a great passport season. So my role is I'm your main point of contact. I'm also the program administrator. And what that means is I'm responsible for the program development, management, assessment, I help with the marketing, and I'm also the main contact for participants. So any customer service issues that come up, I do deal with those. I am in the office um, at the Nebraska Tourism Commission, which is located in Lincoln, right by the Capitol. I'm usually there every day, eight to five, though I do travel quite a bit. So you are welcome to email me or call me anytime, and if you don't get a hold of me, um, you can always leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And also, just a little bit about me. I grew up in Scotia, Nebraska. I got my start in the tourism industry when I was a tour guide in high school at Happy Jack Chalk Mine, which is actually one of our passport stops this year. I graduated from UNL, and I'm currently a grad student in social entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, my background is in program development and marketing. I worked for the University of Nebraska Lincoln for several years. I also worked for Gateway Mall and a lot of technology firms here in Lincoln. So I have a very varied background, and I do have a passion for travel and economic development, and I love this job because I enjoy working with Nebraska's tourism de destinations to increase their traffic, improve their marketing, and just make Nebraska a better tourism destination. So I wanted to start off a little lighthearted. So why do we do the passport program? Well, of course, it's because we want to give travelers a great experience, give them great memories that they will treasure throughout their lives. So I'm going to start off with a video. It features some of the people who completed 80 stops last year. They are passport fanatics. And you're gonna find throughout the passport season, we have so many people who just grab onto the passport program and love it. And they are our greatest marketing tools. They're the ones who get their friends and families involved. And so um, you're gonna enjoy meeting these people. Yeah. diversity in Nebraska. There are a lot of gems in Nebraska that this passport program has taught me and opened my eyes to that I did not know about before. I thought it would be a great way for me and my son, who's five, to explore the state and have some adventures. Both sides of the fossil beds, we had a great time up there. It was hands-on interactive for my son. And um, just the different people we got to meet along the way. We ran into a lot of other people doing the passport as we were doing our own. This is our first year. And we had heard about it. We saw it on television. And then a friend of ours had done it last year. And she had hit all 80 stops. So when I brought that information back to Roger, he said, well, let's do it. And off we went. And even in Grand Island, they have the Enchanted Bakery. All that? <laughs> they have the best cookies. And the one in um, Donovan, oh, the uh, Swedish Swiss baker. Swiss baker, you got your crispies. 
Yeah. So we, oh. bought, we tried to buy something from wherever we went. Yeah, and we in did. Blue Hill, that nook, uh, Porter Nook, they had the best coffee. Yeah. We've been, we've been doing the Nebraska Passport for five of it, seven years. And every Nebraska Passport, we allocate the month of May to do all 80 stops. Um, we wear our t-shirts a lot. And so people will ask us why we're out. What is that shirt? What, what does that mean? And so we explain it to them. And so it is it is a great program. He said, let's do all 80. And I said, oh, I don't think we could do that. But then we had so much fun planning it out and going on little trips. And it was just, it was a riot. That's great. of some of the people you're going to meet. Um, you're going to love talking with all of these people who are on their passport adventures. Um, I also did a lot of research last year about um, other reasons why people participate. So of course it's fun. They also love discovering Nebraskans hidden gems. They enjoy Nebraska scenery, enjoy learning about Nebraska's history, and they do um, do it to support Nebraska businesses and big thanks spending time with family and friends. And also the passport is a competition among a lot of family and friends. So they get, they have a game going on. So as far as training today, I have four objectives. I want you to know um, important things you need to do to ensure that the program runs smoothly. The Passport program is a very simple program, but every year there are some issues that come up that can be um, easily avoided if we're all just on the same page. Then I'm going to give you six steps for becoming a successful Passport stop. And then I'm going to go into how to stamp your booklets, and then um, your role with the mobile app, and then some tips for how to help market the Passport program. So you are part of an extremely popular program, and you know that. So you are chosen based on your uniqueness. Remember, our participants want to see Nebraskans hidden gems. They want unique adventures, and so all of you are offering a unique, one-of-a-kind adventure for our participants. And then customer service. Of course, it's very important to make sure our Passport participants feel welcome um, and have a good time interacting with the staff at the Passport Stops. And then also research. So um, did do research into the kinds of destinations that our participants want to visit. Um, I get some questions. Well, why do we do the 80 stops? And why do we do the theme tours? Research shows that those two things do um, are proven to increase participation in the program. And so that's why we do those. The program does run from May 1st, which is a Sunday, to September 30th, which is a Friday. Um, but you can plan for the bulk of travel to be from Memorial Day to Labor Day. So you're going to get some passport traffic in early May and late September, but um, really your efforts are going to be focused on Memorial Day to Labor Day. And we have had so much good publicity and so much interest in the Passport program that over half of my booklet order has already been spoken for. We are um, accepting Passport requests on the website, on the Passport website, and over 20 states have been represented already. So we are very happy. There's going to be a lot of participation. So I wanted to share a little bit about this year's goals. So last year we had 26,440 people participate. I do want to increase that participation by at least 10,000 people, which is very doable. And I want to have 100% of you, the passport stops and participants, um, report that they are satisfied with the program. So for you, I want you all to have a positive experience. And we'll measure that several different ways, um, mainly increases in traffic, increases in awareness. And for participants, um, I measure how many would recommend the program to their family or friends. And last year it was 100%. And I also want to increase engagement in the program. So we have so many participants, but we want them to really be engaged in the program. So I want to get more prize entries, want people visiting more stops, and more people sharing their stories of their passport travels. And also a big thing, I am going to measure and report economic impact. The passport program is very popular, but I do want to show um, the real impact on the passport stops and tourism all over Nebraska. So I will ask for your help with that, and we'll go over that more in a little bit. So some very important things you need to remember. 
So last year, the number one negative aspect of the program that the participants reported was passport stops were not open when they were supposed to be open. So you must be open the hours that you submitted to me because these are printed in the booklet, so obviously cannot be changed. So the more you honor the schedules you gave me, the better it is for everyone involved, the better experience for you, for the passport program because nobody's getting frustrated, nobody's getting upset. If you do have to close unexpectedly for a short time period, which is okay, we understand, especially for the small businesses this might happen, if you could provide your stamp to a nearby business and just post a sign on your door indicating where people can get their stamp, um, that, will, that will be fine. And you can always email me, actually, I do want you to email me if this happens, um, because if it's a, for a significant time period, I can change your hours on the app and the web. Now, if you do need to close for a very long extended time period, say a week, you need to let me know as soon as possible, and I will help you make arrangements for how we can make that work. Another really important thing, so when you guys submitted your applications, you saw this, Nebraska state law does prohibit you from charging participants for a mission just in order to receive a stamp. So people can come into your destination, you have to give them a stamp without charging them anything. Of course, many of our travelers are going to invest in things that they want to see or do or buy. Um, and if you are charging an admission charge, that is indicated in the booklet. So our travelers have a heads up that if they want to experience your destination, there will be a charge. And also indicated in the booklet is if you're pet friendly and for the state parks, if they need a state park permit. So we're giving people a heads up on what they can expect. Now I'm gonna go into some tips for how to be a successful passport stop. So due to participant research, last year, people's favorite passport stops offered unique and unexpected adventures and learning experiences. Excellent customer service, people loved hearing stories of behind the destination, and they also offered impressive displays, food, and buildings. And we did ask people what their favorite passport stop was, and um, by and far, the winner was Happy Jack Chalk Mine. And if you have ever been there, you know that they offer a very unique experience, and the travel or the tour guides are very, very personable and spend a lot of time with the passport participants telling them about the Happy Jack Chalk Mine. So here are six steps to a successful passport stop. So basically, we want these participants to feel welcomed and special. So be sure that you know um, what you're going to tell them, an interesting story about your destination. And they really want to get to know you as people, and they want to know what makes your destination unique. So for example, we have Eat Creamery on this year, which is an ice cream store in Dundee in Omaha. And they were on Shark Tank. And they also offer customized ice cream flavors. So passport participants want to know about that. That was cool little tidbits. And Postscript is a lettering art studio in Aurora. And so for them, uh, they can talk about you know, why lettering arts, why lettering arts are special, and also why they chose to, um, to open this studio in Ashland, Nebraska. And then Positively You is a boutique in Central City. And all of their items have the theme of think positive. So if people want to know the story behind that, why? Why is that your business direction? And then we have some haunted places. And for those of you haunted places, in the booklet, it does indicate that passport participants should ask you to hear um, your spooky stories. So I've talked to all of you, and you're going to be ready with your stories about your bumps in the night. And then also for staff members, if you're not the owner of the business, uh, be sure that your staff members are ready to talk about why they enjoy working at your destination or why they enjoy volunteering there. After you tell them the story, make sure that you invite the passport participants to experience your stop. And it is important to try to provide a unique experience. A lot of the stops last year provided just five minute behind the scene tours and labeled them as special passport participant tours. And I've already talked to most of you about the experience you're gonna offer. So I'll just give some examples of what's going on this year. So Prairie Arts Center in North Platte, they're gonna be offering five minute art projects, which I think passport participants are gonna love. 
Um, the Renaissance Fine Art and Photography Studio in Aurora is going to offer free photo booth sessions, and it's an old tiny photo booth, so people will come away with a souvenir. Um, so that's going to be really popular. Um, Pawnee City Museum, they're offering a free photo op. They're going to have some costumes out, so something that doesn't cost them anything to do. Um, a lot of you are going to be offering coffee or tea or free samples um, just for our passport participants, so that's great. People will love that. And you have given me all your special deals and discounts that you're going to be offering participants, but be sure to remind them that I know a lot of you are doing like a 10% off for um, passport participants, so remind them when they come in. And a lot of you are doing prize drawings too. And I can, I'm going to compile all these ideas and send you these um, through email as soon as possible. So if you haven't been thinking about your passport experience and you need some ideas, um, there's going to be free ideas. And be sure that you're your local tourism ambassador. So the passport program is designed to encourage tourism throughout the entire state, throughout the, your entire region. And you were picked because you would be a good tourism ambassador. So make sure that you have brochures ready um, about your town or your region. Um, and make sure you know those brochures, give ideas for attractions, food, and lodging. If you don't have brochures and you're not sure who to contact, um, you can try your local CPB or if you're just really don't know who to contact, just let me know and I'll figure it out for you. Um, it's also good to have coupon books or event flyers for your town. Um, a lot of towns do those coupon books. And a lot of places are actually already planning to do displays in other places in their town. So like last year in Nebraska City, we had three passport stops and they worked with local restaurants and gas stations and did little displays about the passport program. So. It's another idea. And do make sure it's worth the pa passport participants' time to return because you want them to bring their friends and families back to your destination. You don't want them to just visit you once. You want to create a relationship with them. So a lot of people will offer a discount or coupon. For example, we had film streams in Omaha on the passport last year, and they offered all the participants a free movie ticket if they came back. We have a lot of people offer buy two tours, get one tour free, um, or um, retail coupons for key shopping times, so like holiday shopping season coupons. And if you do have a year-round event schedule, make sure that you um, give them that or let them know that it's available on your website. Or if you do a big seasonal promotions or events, let them know about that. We do want people to share their stories about passport travels. We use those stories in marketing materials and assessment of the program. So they can share their stories on our, on our uh, website, nebraskapassport.com. And we are still working on the app, and there's going to be a way on the app for people to share their stories directly to Facebook. And so once we get the app all done, which is going to be very soon, I will make sure that you know um, how to work the app. If people share their stories, they will be entered to win the grand prize, which is an Omaha Steaks butcher's chair, chair, which comes with a free chest freezer. So it's a great grand prize. And the last step, make sure that you are a good passport brand ambassador. So if you have people coming in that haven't heard about the passport program, be sure to be very energetic and market the program to them. Um, do you know that the booklet that, they're, that you guys are going to get contains all the necessary information about the program? Um, so you want to emphasize that the program helps people discover Nebraska's hidden gems, how fun it is, that there's prizes involved, and that the program is very easy and there is no cost to participate. So um, please help get more participants um, in the program. And do you know the other passport stops? Um, you are going to get asked about, especially passport stops in your area, so be sure you know exactly what tours they're on, a little description about the passport stop, um, and emphasize how fun the passport stops are, all of them. Um, so just be good ambassadors for the program. I sent you an email that your passport materials will be coming next week, so you'll get your promotional sign, your official passport stamps, you'll get 100 passport booklets to hand out in your window decal. Um, and if you do ever run out of booklets, you can just email me or call me and I'll get you more. So the mechanics of the program, so this is very easy, so stamping. 
So you are going to stamp in two places. So this is last year's booklet. Um, so you are going to be stamping in the booklet. And the booklet is just for people to keep for a souvenir. And then also you'll have to stamp on their prize entry sheet, which is located in the booklet. And that's what they'll turn in to us to get prizes. And remember, the stamps are customized to your destination. And you do not need to stamp for people who are not present. So if someone comes in with 10 different booklets, those 10 people need to be there to get their stamp. Um, and a little bit about the prizes, how those are working. If they do want prizes, they do need their own prize entry form. So this comes into play when there's huge families that, um, that just want to collect stamps on one prize entry. They can do that, that's fine. Families can have one prize entry form, but they will only receive up to four t-shirts. They will not receive multiples of the other prizes. So like I said, if people want to receive all the prizes that they qualify for, they need their own prize entry form. And here's an actual um, page out of the booklet. So you can see we indicated where you will stamp in the booklet. And the prize entry sheet, there's just a huge space for you to stamp. So very, very, very easy. The mobile app. So if you have the mobile app on your phone, it is still the 2016 version. The new version is going to launch on May 1st. So with the app, the participants actually get their own stamps. So usually you do not need to intervene. And how that works, it's called geofencing. So when the passport participants are in your location, their phones will automatically detect that they can stamp their um, app themselves. Now we do have a lot of people that have problems with their phones because their location settings have to be on for it to work. And so you're probably going to get asked that a lot, like why isn't my app working? Their location settings need to be on. Um, and if the phone isn't detecting and they can't get their location settings to work, you are going to be given a four digit pin code that you can give them and they will put in the pin code and then they will be allowed to get their digital stamp. And you will all have unique pin numbers and you can only provide that pin number to passport travelers in person. We had some issues last year with people calling destinations to get pin codes, no. We only want to give those pin codes out if there's someone right in front of you and they can't get their location settings to work and they need that four digit pin code. Um, if you do have issues with people getting angry that you're not giving you them pin codes, they can contact me and um, know that the app is free and it's available for iPhones and Androids. Anyone can download it. You just simply go to your app store and search for a Nebraska passport and it comes up right away. Now, if someone visits your destination when you're closed and they can't get their app to work or, um, yeah, the mechanics aren't working with the app, we will also accept selfies of passport travelers in front of your location. Though we do not advertise this heavily, we, we really discourage it because we want these travelers to come in, obviously, when you're open and talk to you and experience your destination. Um, but sometimes it's just not possible for some people, so we will accept selfies. Uh, so that just means they take a picture of themselves in front of your location and send that picture in with their prize entry form. And we get questions a lot from people about um, can they use the booklet and the app and combine those stamps, and yes, of course, that is fine. And we actually do all the administration of the prize entry forms. So the Nebraska tourism staff will count up their booklet stamps and their app stamps. Okay, so as far as helping market the passport program, I've gotten some calls, um, questions about how you can use the passport logo. You're free to use it on everything. Um, please use it. So put it on your website, put it on social media. Um, a lot of people do newsletters. Um, if you're doing ads, any paid advertising, stick that logo on there. Um, we wanna get that logo all over the state. And I've already talked a little bit through email about social media. I will be sending you social media ideas, but of course you're welcome to keep posting about the program on your own social media. And um, so, I will be posting our social media posts on our Visit Nebraska channels, 
and you can always share those posts. And you, I will be using the trivia in the event listings that you guys gave me um, when you filled out your marketing information forms. And I hope to be doing more content, so doing videos, doing um, articles, interviews with you to post on social media throughout the program. So I'll contact you one-on-one -on -one for additional information. Um, I've had a few passport staffs who have been asked to give presentations about the program, and yes, that's awesome, go do that. And I do have a generic presentation um, that just outlines the program and outlines all the stops for this year, so you can always contact me and I will share that presentation. Um, I talked to you through email about media opportunities, so we're working with the Omaha World Herald, and we are getting those interviews scheduled right now, and so Nebraska Tourism staff will be contacting you um, to see if you're interested in those interviews. We also have television spots across the state that I'll be scheduling and radio spots, um, so we have a lot of opportunities to publicize the program. And do work with your community to market the program. So especially with restaurants or um, other attractions in your region or lodging, a really good idea is to set up quick in-person meetings to make sure that they know about the program and know that you're a stop and to give them a heads up that additional traffic will be coming through your region. And why is this important? It's because passport participants do utilize lodging and um, local restaurants and make purchases at other attractions in a region. So um, everyone in your region is most likely going to see a bump in traffic because of the passport program. And I do have some statistics from last year's passport participants. So um, a lot of them had hotel stays. 98% dined at local restaurants. 94% visited other local attractions not on the passport. 83% attended a local event, 94% made a purchase at a local convenience store. So if you can set up you know, quick meetings with these places in your region and give them a heads up, um, you can really work together to promote each other. A um, little bit more about marketing. So if you do not have a listing on our Visit Nebraska website yet, be sure to do that. So it's totally free. All you have to go do is go to visitnebraska.com and set up an account, and then it's very easy to put in your destination information, and then you'll want to upload a photo of your destination too. Um, and this is important to do yourself because you're going to have your own account then, and you can go in at any time and change your listing. And we do use these listings on our website in our Nebraska Travel Guide, so two free opportunities to market yourself. And throughout the program, we may pull listings from Visit Nebraska for different promotions. So we want to make sure all the passport stops are on our Visit Nebraska website. I sent you an email about our new grant program that coincides with our Through My Eyes campaign. Um, so the whole story behind Through My Eyes, basically it's just Nebraskans showing out of state and international visitors um, Nebraska through our own eyes. So what we love about our state, what makes our state unique. So you can get funds to get a video for Freshly Produced that would align with the Through My Eyes campaign and Visit Nebraska would use that video in a targeted Facebook campaign. And it's a very easy grant application. The deadline is April 24th. Um, I sent you an email with the whole packet attached, or you can download the packet on our website. Um, also, you can share your own story anytime. You can join the Through My Eyes campaign. It's just on visitnebraska.com. You can go in and um, just give a little description behind your destination. You can upload a video, you can upload photos, um, just anything you wanna do to help share the story of your destination. I've had some passport staff to do um, interviews, newspaper interviews, a few television interviews, and that's awesome. Um, if you're ever given an opportunity to publicize your destination in the passport program, um, I definitely encourage you to take it. So just some quick media tips, so be sure to be yourself. Uh, don't be nervous at all with media. Just tell your story, tell why you're passionate about um, the tourism industry. And if you can, summarize the purpose of the passport program, so make sure that people know the passport is to encourage travelers to discover our state. 
by giving them new ideas for where their past can take them. So something very simple like that. Um, you don't need to complicate things. Do be sure to plug other local passport stops. Um, like I mentioned before, be a good passport brand ambassador and definitely encourage people to participate in the program. So plug our website, invite them to come to your destination to get their booklets to get started on the program. And if you could let me know about your media opportunities just so I can track them. And if they want to quote or want to talk to me um, about the passport program, I'm always happy, of course, to, to take care of those requests. So I'm going to, if you haven't looked on our website yet, I'm going to give you a preview of the tours. Um, I'm not going to go through all 80 stops one by one. That would take too much time. You're going to get the booklet soon so you can look at all the stops. And then you can also go to our website anytime and look at the stops. So the first tour is called Hidden Treasure. So the purpose behind this tour, again, people participate in this program because they want to see Nebraska's hidden gems. So we start the booklet off with a tour dedicated to eight of Nebraska's hidden gems. Um, and the description, discover some of Nebraska's hidden gems. You'll be excited to share stories of these surprising adventures with your friends. And just some examples, we have a lot of uh, museums on this tour. We have a honey farm. We have Speedway Motors, Museum of American Speed, which is a, a huge hidden gem here in Lincoln. So great destinations. Then we go into a little me time tour. So this tour is really about self-care, about helping people relax. So the description is take a little time to relax and rejuvenate, slow down and enjoy the little things while you explore Nebraska. So we have some outdoor places, Smith Falls, the water, the highest waterfall in Nebraska. We have gardens, we have some unique retail destinations, coffee houses, restaurants. So all places where people could slow down. Then we have Uniquely Nebraska. Um, description is, explore unique places that will open your eyes to the many exciting travel adventures that Nebraska has to offer. And this tour actually does include um, many past passport stops, which were fan favorites. So we have the Asheville Fossil Beds, uh, um, uh, Happy Jack Talk Mai, we have Baker's Candies, um, so places that are very unique to Nebraska that people really love. Good Times, Good People is a tour based on helping people spend quality time with their family and friends while they enjoy great food and drinks, and also meeting the Nebraskans behind these destinations. So a lot of wineries, restaurants. Then we have Celebrate Nebraska 150, of course, with it being Nebraska's birthday year. Um, the description is join in the Nebraska 150 celebration Participate in events and activities to learn more about the good life. So a lot of these places are offering Nebraska 150 programs or events. Um, for example, we have the Nebraska National Forest. They are having um, a tree planting initiative for Nebraska 150. Um, the National Willa Cather Center is hosting a huge 150 event. And then we have the Nebraska 150 Mobile Museum, which will be touring the state, which is very interactive and tells the story of Nebraska. Then we have a Bia Kittigan tour. So these are very lighthearted adventures. The description is, create lifelong memories. These lighthearted adventures guarantee people of all ages will have unforgettable fun. So there's a couple different ice cream places. There's the, a Kimmel Orchard in Nebraska City. There's a Horn Tea Zoo in Monroe. So very fun, very interactive adventures. Then thrills and chills. So this is our spooky tour. The description is, hear intriguing stories about the people and events that shape these destinations. Enjoy a unique look at the history of Nebraska. So I have a variety of um, places that have spooky stories behind them. So museums, restaurants, um, gift shops. And then art for the heart. Um, description is, find your own creative inspiration, meet Nebraskans talented artists, view unique types of art, and create your own works of art. So this is a very interactive tour. We have a lot of places that will allow people to really be immersed in um, the art making experience. So we have um, Main Street Gallery in Elkhorn, which is a collection of artist studios. We have a quilt tour, so very unique types of art. Hello Sunshine is our outdoor tour. Description is, time spent outdoors will put a smile on your face. 
these adventures will get you moving while you take in Nebraska's beautiful scenery. So a lot of our state, state parks are on this tour. And the final tour is called A Warm Welcome. The description is, you'll feel right at home at these welcoming destinations. Explore beautiful downtown squares, cozy shops, delightful cafes, and more. And so um, a lot of these stops are based on downtown squares. Nebraska has so many pretty downtowns. Um, Aurora is going to be featured, Fairbury, Ord, Tecumseh, Seward, and then some other museums and some retail locations are included on this tour. And here is, this is actually um, the fold out that will be included in the booklet. So it's a map that shows exactly where all the 80 destinations are. So you can see that people will be traveling all over the state. You are dispersed all over. Um, I did send you an email about the prizes. Um, one question I get asked a lot, are they cumulative, they are. So that means if you hit all 80 stops, you do get all five prizes. And the prizes are um, 10 stops, our official Nebraska Passport t-shirt, which are extremely popular. 20 stops is a Nebraska 150 ceramic mug. 40 stops is a Baker's Chocolates gift box. 60 stops is a Nebraska tourism calendar, which is a beautiful calendar. And then 80 stops, we are gonna give people a jacket and some other items that indicate their achievement of making it to 80 stops. We want them to feel very special. And then also I've talked to some of the stops about um, giving products, a sampling of products from the passport stops. And if I haven't talked to you, I'll talk to you um, throughout the program, see if you're interested in giving something for that gift box. And then also for each completed tour, so this means if someone visits all eight stops on one of the theme tours, for example, if they hit every stop on the Thrills and Chills tour, they will receive $15 in the Rascal Lottery Scratch Coupons. And we do have drawings too. So grand prize drawing is the Omaha Steaks Butcher's Chair. So people have to reach 80 stops or share their story to be entered into that drawing. And then anyone who enters in their prize sheet with at least one stamp qualifies to be in the drawings for one of four Nebraska weekend trips, which are going to be a $500 value, $500 value each. And then also we have $300 in lottery tickets. Um, and just a quick little side note, I have ongoing initiatives that will be going on obviously throughout the entire passport program. So I am going to be working on an economic impact report. So I will be asking you for just estimates of your passport traffic and sales. It doesn't have to be spot on. You don't have to spend a ton of time on it. Um, I just want to get an idea of the economic impact of the passport travelers. And then at the end of the program, know that I will give you a comprehensive report about how the program went. So I will give you um, your app, your number of app stamps. And then the booklet stamps that we record. So the booklet stamps that are sent in to us to get stamps. And then also we do um, participant surveys. And so I'll give you all that feedback. Um, we also have a corporate partners program. So I've been very busy with that, going around to corporations throughout the state and getting them involved in promoting the passport program to their employees. Um, and we really focus on companies with really um, established wellness programs because they can easily integrate the passport into their wellness program. My goal is to have at least 20 of these partnerships and I'm getting really close to being there. Um, I'm also working with a lot of schools and libraries um, and actually all over the state, um, concentrated in Lincoln and Omaha, so I've been doing a lot of presentations and tabling events to get people to participate in the program. Um, and if you have any opportunities for uh, marketing or public relations activity, let me know. So that could include if you have a presentation that you can't do that you need me to do, I'm happy to do it. If there's a tabling event or um, any type of event where the Passport Program can have a presence, um, I can definitely work with you on that. And then if you have ideas for corporate partners, uh, definitely let me know. So again, we're looking for huge companies in Nebraska with a lot of employees with established wellness programs that will help us promote the passport program. Okay, <laughs> so I went through that very fast. Um, I think I covered everything that you need to know. If you do have any questions, you can email those to Alex right now, 
and we will get those answered. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I do have one really quick here. Um, you mentioned that uh, about the grant program being um, the applications need to be due by April 24th, but uh, who is the contact person for that? Yes, the grant program is administered by Heather Hoag, um, and you can email her or give her a call at any time. Um, and her information is on our website. Yep. <laughs> You want to stick around for questions? Um, we'll give a we'll give you a few minutes. Okay. And if you don't think of questions now, I you most likely will have a couple questions throughout the passport program. So remember, I'm always available by phone or email. I'm here to help you. Are there other passport webinars you are doing? Yes, I am doing webinars later this week on Thursday at 1 and Friday at 3. So if you're in contact with other passport stops who weren't able to tune in today, make sure that they know about the other two coming up. Good. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to working for, with you this summer. I know it's going to be a great passport program.